Hey everybody, this is Praxis. River just finished his homeschool activity, so he's playing a little bit of video games. And I thought I might take a moment to share something with you that came across my radar that I think is maybe maybe really important. Uh, it was something that came up just a couple weeks ago, and um, well, you, you guys know I've been talking for a while. I, I left my old homestead. I'm in the process of building a new homestead, and in uh, the meantime, I'm here at this normal house. So I'm in this kind of limbo period at the moment, and I didn't think that there was any particular deadlines other than just I'd really like to get out of here as soon as I can and into the, the new place. But uh, something came up just a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was during a interview that I had with Hoople's cat where he was walking me through uh, examining my own fecal material in terms of looking for parasites. Uh, nobody watched the video, <laughs> really, um, but because of what it's about. Uh, but it related to you know hum human waste, composting, humanure, that kind of stuff. But anyway, the interesting part, aside from the fact that Hoople's decided and agreed to sit down with me for that interview, was... Uh, well, it was a conversation that we had immediately after that interview. Um, well, here it is. You guys can take a peek at it. Thanks for watching. Well, thanks, Hoopals. I really appreciate you taking the time today to do this. I, uh, I gotta be honest, I was just the tiniest bit nervous that I actually was gonna find something. Yeah, I mean, it's always a, it's always a dive into the unknown. I mean, I think if you do it every day, uh, you'll get used to it, right? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I don't know if this will be an everyday <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah all right cool cool well hey well um you know if there's ever anything else that comes up uh you know i'd love to yeah. do an interview with you or anything like that if you ever you know you know, just come up with oh, another sure, thing that we sure. can collaborate on. um actually uh praxis i just wanted to ask you something in confidence sure. well one of the things is like a couple of weeks ago like i've been really busy at work and we actually i actually had to go with one of my co-workers we had to go to ottawa for a couple of days to go attend a, a, a seminar meeting like a conference where we all sit around and yap about a specific topic for the government okay sure um i've done, I've done a few of them in the past on dirty bombs and stuff like that it's just kind of like gather information and have fire services with police and our health care and our yeah, army sure. and i'll talk about what we would do if right anyway we, we went off to this one and it was a little different from the usual ones this one seemed to be that there's actually a specific threat uh, I just wonder if you'd been hearing anything about any type of weaponized uh, weaponized pandemic or something, or any sort of infection coming up, because it was very specific. This 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 meeting. Oh yeah, I uh, I, mean, well, I guess I've I've heard the usual stuff. I mean, people are always saying the sky is falling. Yeah, the usual the usual <laughs> yeah. crazy Ebola is going to destroy everybody. Right, right. You know, if Three people die, we all panic. This was a little bit more specific. This was talking about either a, a, some sort of a terrorist cell in, in northern Canada, um, which is again was a strange setup, if it's not true. And uh, one of the police officers uh, up there that I was actually talking to during drinks, so you get paid for this, so we take advantage, was actually telling me this, it's actually, they actually do think that they're actually working with a CRISPR in the northern on, north of Ontario or Alberta. And they're trying to weaponize something, and it seems that they've got some sort of an intel on the inside, and they're maybe um, six months to a year away from actual development. Yeah, I've heard about CRISPR. That's where they do the gene editing to customize the. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I, to be honest, I, I mean, you hear about this kind of stuff so frequently. It's like you'd go crazy if you you literally thought every single time you heard about it, it was absolutely going to be the end. I mean, is there anything specific about this that makes it seem more credible? No, I don't either, but it was the actual depth of the conversations that we were having in the conference. Like, it's a federal government-sponsored thing, right? Yeah. Like, they were taking this extremely seriously. Uh, and it was a very specific uh, variant, I believe, of Ebola. Yeah, no, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't heard anything. Do they have, like... Is this something that we should expect to see within the next week or so, or like, what, what are they? No, no, no. Uh, apparently, they're, they're not that well funded, the group, and they are desperately trying to find them. Um, the army there actually have plans to have, have, have actually got now a, a unit that's bioprotected and trained in this to actually go in and take them out. But they're having a hard time finding them. They had somebody on the inside, but from what I can tell, that person got found out and killed. Um, but the the idea is that they're actually working on Ebola strains or flu strains, but probably Ebola, trying to make them 90 or more percent uh, mortality rate. 
and for, yeah, it was the, the, everybody's taking this pretty seriously. I mean, the federal government has done this sort of thing before when they have a specific threat or a generalized threat. This was really specific. Like they were talking about, it would start here, it would go there, it would it would probably start in about a year or so. Uh, they were very specific, and that's what kind of freaked us all out. They wanted to know what the hospital would be able to do with such high mortality rates. It was, it was, and then fire services and all the rest of it, and hydro, and they were asking very specific questions of people who were kind of specialists in their fields. Um, it was interesting and kind of freaky. Well, well, I guess if I could say anything that would tend to support the idea that this is actually happening, it would be that it would be just my luck because I literally just left my last homestead and I'm in the middle of beginning to build the next one. So, I mean, yeah. that would really yeah. be my luck. If they... Yeah, if you you don't want to deal with your bowler in a tent, right? Um, <laughs> well, like, just, just keep your ears and eyes open because you know a lot of good people who aren't crazy. Um, but, you know, if you hear of anything like if the hydro plants are getting extra stars in and all that sort of stuff, if you hear something weird's going on, just let me know. I'm going to keep an eye on this myself. I'm hoping it's just whatever, right? Uh, but you never know. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll let you know when you let me know. Thanks for the heads up. All right, mate. Thanks, Brexit. Uh, that was kind of fun. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks. Uh, have a nice rest of your day. You too, mate. Bye. Bye. Right, so after that interaction, I pretty much just put that thought to the back of my mind. I didn't really think about it for a while until... At some point, I did start thinking about it and realized that Hoople's cat is not one of these people like, uh, well, he's not like an Alex Jones person that, you know, is constantly saying, it's like, you got two weeks left, then the iron gates close, and that's it. You know, the, the sky is falling, and it's happening immediately. Um, yeah, as much as I disagree with Alex Jones having been banned from a lot of different net, uh, networks and platforms and things like that, the man honestly is and continues to be a fountain of inaccurate prophecies. Alex Jones here with a breaking emergency news alert. And, um, you know, if you go crazy every time someone like that says something is imminent and it's about to happen, then you'd go nuts. But uh, there are people that are out there, and I think Hoople's Cat is one of them, where if they say something should be a concern to you, it's probably a good idea to pay some closer attention to it. So I am paying closer attention to it, and... I am in this transition period where I'm in this limbo between homesteads where I'm not in a particularly good situation if something like that does end up happening. If there was a weaponized Ebola pandemic that struck the population, a lot of our infrastructure is just going to kind of collapse because you need people to maintain a lot of that stuff, you know, power plants, shipping, trucking, you know, all this kind of stuff, energy and everything. You need people to maintain that. And if large numbers of people are, you know, forget being killed, just incapacitated by something like that, it's going to make our system really unstable and crumbly uh, for, for quite a while. And you don't want to be in a place like this that is really dependent upon the grid and the system being functioning in order for this kind of place to be livable. For example, this place uses oil heat. If I don't get oil heat deliveries and it's cold out, I do have a wood stove in the basement, but this house is not made to really be heated by the wood stove. The, the pipes run through the walls, they're gonna crack and split, and I'll have all sorts of trouble like that. So I'm accelerating my schedule. I wanna get my new place up and running as quickly as possible and I want to take you guys along on that journey. Now you guys know I was going to do that anyway but I'm going to do it in an accelerated way and in an in-depth way where I really want to share the whole process with you guys so if you want to get into your own homestead as well you will really be able to see what the process is like and you know not get hit with a lot of surprises. During the series whenever I'm on location out at the new homestead site I'm going to be shooting with this. This is a new camera. It's got two cameras on either side. This does 360 degree video. So whenever I'm on location out there doing the actual build you'll be able to look all around in any direction at anything that you are interested in so if I don't directly address something uh, you'll be able to take a peek at it because you'll be able to scan around and just kind of look at you know whatever is uh, of interest to you at the time. Also, uh, I'm going to be doing two live streams per month. Uh, one on the first Friday of the month, one on the third Friday of the month. The way that we used to do Alien Invasions, first and third Fridays. The first Friday of the month uh, live stream is going to be open just to the people that really make this whole channel possible. All of the Patreon supporters, uh, you know, just to give them an opportunity to, you know, ask their questions where there's not a million other people, well, not a million other people, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, maybe 
several dozen scores of other people uh, you know, in there. So the first Friday of the month is going to be a special Patreon-only Q&A. Uh, that will be provided once it's done. I'll provide that to everyone. So if anyone wants to you know, listen in on that and see if there's anything of interest to you guys, uh, generally, uh, that'll be available to everyone. The third Friday of the month is going to be a live stream open to everybody. Uh, and uh, that, that'll just be if there's something that I've been working on in the series and I didn't really touch on it as much as you'd like, you can ask me those questions directly during that. And as much as I'm capable of doing so within the half an hour window of the live stream, I will make sure that I, you know, answer your question to get you up to speed about anything that, you know, you're, you're unsure of. But aside from that, I'm just going to try to bring you in on the process as much as I can uh, and just share with you the entire thing. So if you want to do your own homestead, if you want to do your own build, you'll know what it's like and you'll know somebody who went through it. So that's it for this video. I wanted to give you a sense of what's coming uh, and uh, you know what my plan is. Next time when I uh, you know come back, once I kind of get my head wrapped around all this stuff, I'm going to share with you what I've done so far in this process, what I have left to do, and give you guys kind of a broad view of what the entire process is going to be like. And then in the third video, we're going to go over the specific house design uh, that I'm going to be building, why I made certain decisions, why some things I think are going to be better than others. Uh, you know, I've been through this before. I've built a homestead before. This is my second time around and I've learned a lot from the last time. So that's it. I hope you guys find this series helpful. I hope that you find it inspiring if you want to do your own homestead or if you want to just build your own simple retreat. This will also be helpful for that. And I you know, hope to see you in the comments and at the live streams. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.